Welcome back to the Geelong Region Soccer Show, Steve. And our next guest is, um, well, someone that, like I said, needs no introductions. Uh, every year, um, every year in, um, in Australia, around 254,000 people seek help from homelessness services. And at times, this is the sad part, they are turned away due to resourcing, funding, and or capacity or lack of. The CEO Sweep Out is a one-night event over one of the longest and coldest nights of the year. And on that night, hundreds of CEOs, business owners, as well as community and government leaders sleep outdoors to support the many Australians who are experiencing homelessness and people at risk of homelessness. Each CEO sleep out participant commits to raising thousands of dollars to help Vinnie's provide essential services to people who need them. Now, last year, the Vinnie CEO sleep out raised $7.9 million for people experiencing homelessness and people at risk of homelessness. This year, they want to make an even bigger impact. Now, funds raised through the 2020 Vinnie CEO sleep out will go directly into their homeless and crisis services providing life-saving support, guidance, and education to people at risk and experiencing homelessness. One of those people locally and someone who is heavily involved on the football scene here in Geelong is our next guest, the president of Bell Park Sports Club. A very big welcome to you, Rose Piratina. How are you doing? Hey, Stephen. Hey, Tonchi. How are you? Rose, we can hear the wind. It's, it looks cold. And um, you, you know, we, 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 we're led to believe that you're actually coming to us live from the site of where you're going to be sleeping out this Thursday. Um, it's, 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 first of all, welcome to the show, Rose. It's great Thank to have you, you on. <laughs> it's great to be on, guys. Thank you. Now, do tell us a little bit about the CEO Sleep Out, because this year it's a little bit different, a little bit different, but you'll be p participating for the third year running later this week. Yeah, so it's been, um, this is our third year in Geelong, and um, this year, given the circumstances of COVID, um, we've been asked to either sleep in our car, um, on a couch or in our backyard to rep represent the homelessness and the true living of for them. And so I've chosen um, to do the, my backyard. And um, I tell you, it's not that um, warm out here. <laughs> oh, it looks freezing, I tell you what. Um, it sounds a little, a little windy and cool, yeah. <laughs> It's cold. <laughs> I think it's um, 10 degrees. So can you imagine what, um, yeah, yep. by two or three o'clock in the morning, it's going to drop pretty low. Yeah, 100%, 100%. Um, and you're very long nights at the moment too as we approach the solstice. Um, now, what can we do as a Geelong soccer community to help homelessness as the problem in our region is um, something that seems to be um, on the increase, I suppose? Um, what can we do about it as a Geelong soccer community? It's actually um, really quite sad, our statistics here in Geelong. And um, what makes me the saddest is that 20% of kids are homelessness. Like, so that that means that they they are, you know, they haven't got a warm home to be in. So that as a community and as a soccer community, we can contribute by donating. And, um, and what I do is I um, do a program which um, is connecting with kids and that's how helping underprivileged kids play a sport that they love and that's also for our soccer so because that will help all underprivileged kids play soccer as well but it's not just soccer it's other sports as well but soccer is definitely on the cards now apologies for the wind um but that's i guess that's what adds the authenticity i mean that's what it's like it's mm. it's quite scary and i yeah, and I remember, um, uh, you know, previous two, um, uh, I guess, episodes, if you like, of the um, CEO Sleepout was held at Cadinia Park and, and speaking to a few people who were, who were involved at Cadinia Park that's, um, that partook in that. They said sometimes, um, I remember um, uh, Cameron Loftus from, um, from um, um, Barham Sports Assembly said yeah. to me, he goes, the first year it was quite, quite confronting because we had actually had a person that was homeless come to us and talk to us. And he said, sometimes it's the difference between one or two bad decisions between you living a perfectly happy, healthy, um, uh, comfortable existence and being left out in the cold. 
Um, just just um, recently, I think on SBS, there's a there's a show called Filthy Rich and Homeless. Now, I haven't watched this show, but some people that have watched it have said it. It just really opens your eyes to the grim realities of homelessness in Australia. Rose, how important is is getting the, the raising the awareness and influencing decision makers um, out there? And these sort of programs like CEO Sleep Out and even maybe some of the other programs on TV that are out there, how important is that to getting that that, that awareness out there? It's really important because it does affect, it's a, it's a spiral and effect. It, it comes it, providing for our future, our children, you know, the education, all those sectors. It impacts all the way through from, you know, from the parent right through to the child. It just doesn't stop at the parent. And what it is, is raising awareness. It, it, it is to try to change this. Australia, we are very, very fortunate here in Australia. So um, us as, a, as one community can make a difference in just putting some meals on people's plates. And that's what's the sad part about it is that some people, some families out there are living from day to day. And um, Cameron was right. The first year I remember waking up um, well, I actually didn't sleep, to be quite honest, and it was um, I, I fell asleep for about half an hour, and then I woke up again, and, and it hit me. It was so cold that 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 night. It was one of the coldest nights in June in history, and um, it really hit me. And I remember tears just rolling down my face because I only had to do that for one night, and I was going home to a warm bed. There are people there that do this every night. Mm. And that's what got to me. And then to realise that we have 20% of children in Geelong that do this, it just broke my heart. Um, and just on that show, Filthy Rich and Homers, I binge watched that sort of series on Sunday night. And if you haven't seen it, I'd recommend getting over to SBS On Demand. Just um, people should go and have a look at it. Because I think, as you mentioned, Tonji, maybe one or two bad decisions might lead to it. But some of the people on there, it was actually through no, no fault of their own that they'd end up in this situation, just an unfortunate set of family circumstances or something else, for instance. Um, now, now, Rose, um, should the federal government's uh, COVID recovery package be focusing more on social housing rather than the $150,000 renovations of homes to people who are already well off? Yeah, see, this is a, a, a look for me personally, it's, it's a hard one to answer because it becomes, um, it can, you know, what is right, what is wrong. But for me, I can say this, we need to put more investment in the people that need it. Mm. And that's the homelessness. That's all I'm going to say because if we, if you've got a home and you can feed, you know, you can put food on the table and week to week and you may be struggling but you can still put food on the table, these people don't know where they're getting their next meal from. So the government needs to put some attention into that because Australia, we shouldn't be in these circumstances. Australia is very blessed. Yeah, yeah. Before we move on to football matters, Rose, um, I, I just want to bring everyone's attention to the um, address right below me. So donate to a very worthy cause, www.ceosleepout.org.au forward slash fundraisers forward slash Rose Piratina forward slash Geelong. Now, just tell us a little bit about um, how much you've raised, what's your target? And I believe there's a very, very special incentive for anyone who donates today. Um, um, so tell us a little bit more about that. So, so far I'm, um, I've raised uh, $3,500 and I, my target, um, I've already passed my target because this year, the, given the um, circumstances of COVID, we understand that out there, some people are doing it tough and generally, you know, we might have in the past that we might have been able to be more giving, but given the circumstances this year, so we've lowered our targets. So tonight, today, if anyone donates to the link below, I've, um, I'm going to match it. Oh, there you go. Fantastic, folks. Wow. So we want everyone here, um, we want everyone who's tuning into the show tonight and who tunes in right up until Thursday and watches the replay of this, make sure to donate. Um, actually, not, well, not, not about tomorrow. We want it tonight uh, because it will be matched by, by Rose. So, so that is... That is... So, yeah, match it and um, I'll match every donation that comes through. 
There you go. Fantastic. An absolute fantastic incentive. And um, we, we don't want to embarrass you too much, Rose, but you are also a previous winner of the uh, Female Football Administrator of Geelong as well. So it's you, you put so much spare time into making the community a better community. So um, on behalf of the entire Geelong football community, thank you and, and congratulations on, on doing what you keep, keep doing. But on to football matters now up at Bateson. How has the committee at Bell Park been handling the shutdown period? And what have you as a group been working on during this time? Or has the club just been basically forced to hibernate? No, we haven't. We've actually, um, with this, we've, we've one, one of the main things is that we wanted to stay connected with our community. So that was number one. We wanted to make sure that everyone was safe and we're, that we're connected and we communicated as much as we could because as, as everyone knows, we were, you know, we were dictated you know, day by day what was happening. So that that was very difficult to try to make any plans given the governance of it all. So um, what we did is we made sure we stayed in touch with social media um, and, you know, we, we had Zoom. So we, had, we, we tried to do live, you know, live uh, meetings. Um, we tried to keep everybody in the loop because it's the unknown was scary. Um, as the information came through our Facebook page, um, our Instagram, our Zoom meetings, um, emails, we tried to keep um, our members in the loop as best as we could. Uh, the one thing that we, we did do with Bell Park is we did try to um, plan accordingly as best as we could um, because we didn't know what, when things were lifted, what that, would, that landscape would look like. Um, and Rose, how was the club shaping up for season 2020 prior to the pandemic in terms of numbers of players, coaches and staff as opposed to last year and recent years? Right. Um, before, actually, this year has been our strongest year. We, mm -hmm. um, our members, our members um, and our participants went through the roof. So it was great to see that. So thank you to everybody out there that does support um, Bell Park and Geelong Soccer and all the sports club uh, out there. Um, look, with us, it was it was um, looking very strong. Um, we were, had more teams that we that what we ever had in history. Um, so for us in soccer, it was looking great. Now, what's the situation now? Like, are most of those players expected to return? And will Bell Park be able to field all of its teams, um, you know, that it intended to um, once play does resume? Um, yes, we're lucky, Tonchi, because we've got three fields, as you well know. Mm -hmm. So we're able to, to cater for that with the restrictions. So we need to make sure that we, we, we keep everybody safe and healthy. Um, so that's our number one priority. And our number two priority is soccer. So one... Um, so what we're doing is making sure that everyone, um, we've got a schedule in place. So yeah. that's what we did, the planning and um, making sure that the season moving forward, that we is sustainable and um, keeping everybody and reassuring everybody um, that because it is a bit scary going into, you know, um, given that we were locked down and now we've, we're going back into training and soccer and so forth. So numbers, some people have... Um, decided not to play uh, soccer for this year. Mm -hmm. Understandable. Yep, you know, it's absolutely. Tough. It's so scary. You know, we don't know. Numbers increasing. So um, with that, but they haven't dropped off dramatically. And I can honestly tell you we've only, it, it hasn't been, a, I think that so far we've only had probably 10 people that aren't returning. So that isn't a big number. That's very good. So by the sounds of that, Rose, the, uh, the the club will be able to field all of its teams that it intended to this year once play does resume? Absolutely. Yeah. We've, we're we're, we're strategic. We, with the TD, the technical development um, group, we made sure that that's what, what we did. And we, did, we had a strategy in place and we um, also had a schedule in place as well. I guess um, off the field, Rose, um, given the recent investment in renovation to the social rooms at the club, um, which was completed, I think, at the back end of last year, has this current pandemic shutdown come at the worst time for the club? Is it a time when the club was really going gangbusters and now things are just sort of really stuffed in time? <laughs> Tonchi, I don't think you could have put it any better. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> what else are you going to say? You can't sugarcoat it, can you? <laughs> Straight to the point, Dodgy. Snuff that up. Oh, no, that's what I can say to you. <laughs> <laughs> look, um, <laughs> look uh, to, to be quite honest, last year we were closed. Uh, the club rooms were closed, let's mm. be specific, um, uh, because of renovations. And... Um, well, we had some really we had a business plan in place uh, with that, and um, we we started off January really strong um, with our events. You know, all the um, our our pavilion um, being rented out. You know, in 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 the way of people wanting to have their their functions there because it is um, it is newly renovated. But um, what it, this has done is actually put us in. Um, it is, it is in a very stressful situation mm. because the income mm. stream has stopped. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, and, and speaking of changes around the club to the infrastructure, what is the update on the, the new female-friendly improvements to change room facilities at the club? Yeah, so we've been going, um, David Seekin and myself have been working very closely to try to get, you know, everything up to scratch. And um, we've just, I, I believe that we're at um, the building permit. I think that's just gone ahead. So um, things are, you know, looking, but, you know, we have to really put things into perspective as well. We've, we've had a, a, you know, we've had this six months of no income. So, you know, it may have to stretch out a little bit longer or we may need to review that and sit, look at our situation because you know it, it's not easy just to come up with funds to finish a project no absolutely and it, it look it, it everyone says we're going to go back back to normality as quickly as possible and we're going to recover and be where we were it's going to take such a long long time and, and particularly things like capital works and stuff like that it's it's really going to take a lot longer than we we hope for um on that note however uh rose wishing you all the very best for, for thursday night um Oh, and, and as well in the fundraising stakes as well. Um, I mean, tonight's a good practice run, but geez, it, it looks cold out there already. And uh, and you know, here I am worried that my coffee has gone cold, and and you're out there where it really is cold. But all jokes aside, it is a very very worthy cause. We're we're imploring everyone that that can. Um, you know, obviously there are people that can't, and a lot of people doing it tough. But those that can, please. There's the website. Um, Steve has also popped it in the comments section. So uh, please get out there, help as much as you can. Any any amount, big or small, is is more than appreciated. And Rose, all the very best for season 2020 Thank for you. Thursday night. And